So, in this week we saw two clustering techniques uh, from the diagnostic analytics. We will see where it is used in the research papers, uh, we will give some sample research papers. So, for k-means clustering uh, I we selected this paper, um, this is uh, in general of computer and computing in higher education. So, here the learners are clustered based on their engagement uh, with the MOOC environment. Okay? So, that is a question of the clustering patterns of engagement in massive open online courses. Okay? So, what is learners engagement? They measure the learners engagement in a MOOC environment using four metrics, uh, what is reading frequency, how many times the student read, so the number and writing frequency, how many times the student write uh, in a forum, that is basically writing and reading in a forum and how many videos he watched uh, and uh, how many times he attempted the quiz. Okay? So, forum reading, forum writing, video watched and quiz attempted, they computed frequency of students interacting with the MOOC that is for each student. Okay? Then if you have 100 students, their numbers are coming in. Now, there are 4 variables, what we saw in last class in the clustering example is only 2 variables, so you can plot and look at it, but 4 dimension you cannot do that. So, we can apply the k-means clustering algorithm. So, they applied claimants clustering algorithm on all this data and, uh, and uh, they used Euclidean distance and uh, they did a k value from 1 to 15, remember. So, see that a k value based on the k value that um, within the group sum of squares that is the objective function j value is reducing, right? the other function is reducing. But they choose uh, k equal to 4, the reason is we know the elbow is at this point and uh, also the difference between uh, the error function reduction is actually less from this point. From 4 to 5 the, the error function reduction is very, very small or you can choose k at 6, okay? whether you can choose k at 4 or 6 based on your research questions and what the data uh, gives to you. Okay. So, here they choose k equal to 4. So, that is exactly why they use k equal to 4. Let us see what the k equal to 4 means. Uh, here uh, they looked at the students in each cluster. Okay. There are 4 clusters, each cluster gives you set of students. Say cluster 1 will have some 20 students, cluster would have more students something like that. Looked at the data or looked at the behavior of students in a cluster 1. Remember this is a diagnostic analytics, this is not a predictive analytics. So, we do not know why a student uh, was uh, getting a low score, a student is not able to clear the quiz. So, we clustered and you see there is one cluster, all the students are doing low activity on all the 4 metrics, like they are not um, doing any uh, reading the post or um, writing any forum messages or they are not watching video or they are not um, uh, taking attempting quizzes. So, that is why they are not really uh, not interested in the course. So, they are dropout. So, how do we come give the name dropout perfect student? It is up to you because you are the researcher based on the data, based on your domain expertise, based on your understanding you can give the names. So, they give a name as dropout. Uh, so, because all these four metrics are low, so these students are mostly dropout. So, this we can check whether students going to drop out or not in predictive analytics. If you see that, that will be clustering can be classified as a classifier clusters. The second one is perfect student, uh, they are highly engaged in all the 4 metrics especially accessing video lectures and reading lot. So, they are perfect students, they might do well and they might continue the course till the end. There are some students who are gaming the system, who are highly engaged in number of quiz attempts and very, very low on video watching, which means they do not care about what is delivered in the content, they are very confident, no I can of all the quiz, I know all the content here. So, I go and directly attempt the quiz, they are gaming the system. They might be success, they might be not success, we do not know about that. See, we do not know about the success part here, but based on the interaction behavior, they are gaming the system, we can come up with that. There are some students uh, who are social and uh, who, are, who are the ones who is highly writing in the discussion forum, they do not care about other, uh, other interactions like uh, watching video or reading others, instead they are the one who is actually writing in the discussion forums, others are even not even writing. So, these kinds are mostly social, they are not watching video much, but they are kind of social uh, group. So, we are grouping into this four. So, it is up to the researcher to find out what are the metrics to consider for clustering and how to make inference from the clusters. So, the k-means algorithm will help you to find number of clusters, that is it. So, the technology will help you to find a, should I go for four clusters, how to group them from the data. 
but uh, choosing the right parameters to create clusters and uh, making inference from the clusters that is up to the researcher. That is why we call this a domain expertise is needed. So, in this course I would like you to create that expertise not uh, only how to uh, use the algorithm or apply the algorithm. So, let us look at the example for hierarchy clustering. Um, in this paper uh, in the LAC uh, 2019, um, uh, the, the authors used agglomerate hierarchy clustering to model learner participation profiles in online discussion forums. Again, this is also online discussion forums based on the students participation in the forum, they are uh, creating the clustering using Agnes. Um, they use data uh, in online discussion forums, they classify the data into two groups reading and writing. So, reading uh, is separate activity, writing is separate activity. From reading they selected some data points, uh, for uh, example, uh, for writing they used the ratio of the threads, how many times uh, uh, threads has been started by the learner compared to all the threads started in the discussion forum, how many times the learner replied to the post, active number of days, how many days a uh, learner logged in uh, in the number of days, how many days he really created a thread or he replied to a post or something like that. So, if you actively participated in the discussion forum, that days will be counted as active number of days. Similarly, they created four uh, uh, parameters for writing and similar uh, parameters as computed for the reading. So, now they have data for reading separately, writing separately. Using these data uh, and uh, four uh, dimension data for all the students, they computed the agglomerate clustering. Let us look at the clustering values. So, so, for the writing group, there is writing group 1, uh, there are very few students and there is all are uh, formed to be 1 cluster, there is no good clustering coming out because all are very distinct. And for the writing uh, or W2, there is a characteristic, there are different cluster group and writing 3, there are 3 clusters comes out. So, what happened is they based on the writing activity, uh, they clustered into 3 clusters here. Okay, this can be combined further to make the agromatic clustering, but they may left it here actually. Let us look at this, this, this height you know, this height distance uh, is actually uh, tells you how far the distance is from the clusters. If you are finding the similarity measure between two points uh, using one of the similarity measure function, the sum of function they use here is complete link. Uh, complete link is finding the farthest point in the uh, same cluster. So, if you use a complete link the distance between the clusters indicated by the height of this dendrogram. You know this height actually indicates how the distance from this cluster to other clusters. So, similarly for a reading behavior they computed the four clusters since a lot of students uh, see there are four clusters they created which means uh, which means see if you what is four cluster mean exactly is they dropped at year. This might be combined again to two clusters, again combined to one cluster. They pick false the value, so they selected these students as a behavior one, behavior two, behavior three, behavior four. So there are four clusters they wanted to analyze. So as an example of uh, hierarchical clustering used on uh, data, uh, so you can also apply uh, this kind of uh, clustering algorithms on the data for diagnostic analytics to understand why students behave like that. Since uh, we saw two papers um, in um, k-means clustering also in hierarchical clustering, uh, we asked the same question we uh, discussed at the beginning of this week's uh, first video. Can you list down uh, two applications of clustering in any learning environment? The same question we, we asked in the first video. Uh, now you know what is hierarchical clustering, what is k-means clustering. Now you uh, saw the application of them in uh, two papers. Can you list down? After listing down, listen the video to continue. There is no response to the previous activity. You have to compare your response to the first video, the similar activity and the, the list the last activity and see there is an improvement or not. If you there is some change and if you understood clustering and if you understand how the clustering can be used on different learning environment, uh, it is good uh, you would have learned uh, clustering. Uh, if there is no change, I think uh, for you might have already know what is clustering and you already applied uh, clustering in a right environment or you did not really uh, understand the clustering in this uh, week's video. So, I request you to go and watch uh, 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 read content regarding clustering in the online. Thank you.